Welcome to another edition of Chaplain John with Chaplain John Sayers, featuring special reports and interviews with people doing kingdom ministry in Tulare County and beyond. And now, here's Chaplain John. Hey, good morning. Today's Friday, and on um, Monday, I, I, I shared the I Have a Dream speech, a part of the I Dream, Dream speech by Martin Luther King. It was Martin Luther King Day. And then I, my other thoughts for the day on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, um, I got out of a magazine. I'm just going to share with you the magazine, but the magazine is called Newsmax. And yes, Newsmax is a conservative magazine. But January, they highlighted 11 uh, African-American um, politicians or politi in, the, in the serving our Senate, Congress, state, the whole gamut, 11 hi highlighted uh, black people, American African people that really believed in our country. They may very well have been a product of, uh, of uh, the dream that Martin Luther talked about. This is a uh, Senator Tim Scott, and I shared about him, a uh, big picture of him. But I also shared about three others. They have 11, three others, um, strong uh, black leaders in our country today that not only believe in our country, they believe in the dream. You know, I have a dream. I said that what, what I want to do today is wrap up this, um, this uh, series, and I hope, it, I hope it's not going to be too long. I try to keep these under five minutes, I, but I'm just going to go for it right now. Because I got this event, this person, powerful black person, I found out about him in the Founder's Bible. Now, the Founder's Bible I've shared before. I hope you get it someday, because it, as you're reading through Scripture, it, the editors bring out historic events of our country. I have, I have more of a passion for our country now. I'm reading how, and how the, not only how does that tie into scripture, but how it ties into us. I, 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 I want to, I'm starting to have a passion again for our country, for the history of our country. Ah, passion. Well, anyway, this event took place um, that I'm going to read to you. In fact, I'm going to read to you about a pastor named Henry Highland Garnett, who was a black pastor and who was asked by the Congress that, uh, in 1865, 1865, the Congress invited him to speak. Now, that was towards the end of the Civil War, and that's when the 13th Amendment was going to be brought into our Constitution to abolish slavery. And they asked Pastor Garnett to speak in front of him a black pastor. Now, there's so much I could share what he had to say in this um, the story they had written about him, because he does highlight, he even highlights the founding fathers. He, he talks about Jefferson, Washington, like towards the end of their life, um, they realized slavery was wrong. Benjamin Franklin, Patrick Henry. Uh, it's amazing. He, he goes back to the founding fathers how they knew this was wrong too. But in 1865, I want to read to you, and I hope I don't stumble around because I I want to read it somewhat accurate and follow it. And I'm gonna, I got my magnifying glass and I'm trying to do this accurate. So hang with me, but here's, here's a bit of his uh, talk to the Congress in 1865. He says, let the verdict of death, which has been brought against slavery by the, uh, Oh, by the 38th Congress be affirmed and executed by the people. Let the gigantic monster perish. Yes, perish now and perish forever. Let slavery die for it has been a long and, and fair trial. God himself pleaded against it. Its death warrant is signed by God and mad. Do not commute its sentence. Give it no reprise. Let it be executed, put to death with shame and horror. Honorable senators and representatives in this and rulers of this great nation, I cannot refrain this day by evoking upon you in God's name the blessing of millions who are ready to perish, but to whom a new and better life has been opened up 
by your humanity, justice, and patriotism. You have said, you have said, let the constitution of this country be amended that slavery and involuntary servanthood should no longer exist in the United States except in punishment for a crime. Surely an act so sublime could not escape divine notice. And doubtless, the, this deed has been recorded in the archives of heaven. Uh, favorable men and honor and honor of God and his, as his instrument speedily forth, speedily, speedily finish the work which has been given to you. Emancipate, enfranchise, educate, and give this blessing, the gospel, to every American citizen. Emancipate, enfranchise, educate, and give this blessing of the gospel to every American citizen. That's what Patrick, no, that's what Pastor Garnet said. I was going to say Patrick. Pastor Garnet said in 1865. See, I I believe that Martin Luther King, the Civil Rights Movement, maybe maybe started way back. Maybe then. Maybe it really did start with our founding fathers, our Constitution, because we really. And that's why I'm getting a passion. We're not perfect. We're striving to become better and better. Um, we're striving to be what God wants us to be. And Pastor Pastor Henry got it right. He got it right when he said back in 19, uh, excuse me, 1865, not 1960, but 1865, when he said, this, we ought to finish this work. What is the work we need to finish? And he is not only talking about them, that, that, back, that this is what, all generations, and this is what our generation, this is what we a country should keep striving to do to finish the work, because it's never going to be done. Yes, we're going to make mistakes, but we're called to finish the work. What work? <laughs> okay, to emancipate, to enfranchise, to educate, and give the blessing of the gospel to every American citizen. Ah, oh, that's what this week has meant to me. That's, and I'll probably share something similar. The next time we have a next time on Martin Luther King Day. Oh, I'll share the I Have a Dream speech. But I hope I remember to share the uh, Pastor Henry Garnett's speech. Here's the work we should be doing. Always. Not only as a country, but as Christians, as people that have given our life to Jesus as the Lord and Savior. I, this is not a bad. What's our call to do? To emancipate, to enfranchise to educate and give the blessing of the gospel to every American citizen. Ah, God bless America. And may America keep blessing God.